Hello, I'm Ron Wilson and welcome back to PD Sessions. The life insurance sector needs to be overhauled with advisor remuneration capped, according to the recently released Trowbridge report. The report also suggests prohibiting some types of licensee remuneration and improvements to the quality of life insurance advice and life insurer practices. In international news, developing Asia is forecast to achieve GDP growth of 6.3% in both 2015 and 2016. Meanwhile, any potential exit from the EU could dramatically reduce UK's future economic growth. In other news, following the launch of the Financial Advisors Register in March, ASIC will now focus on capturing financial advisor qualifications. Trevor Trahan has the details. The life insurance sector should be overhauled to address serious shortcomings by way of changes such as capped commissions for advisors, according to a report commissioned by the FSC and the AFA. The recommendations have been made in the final report of the Review of Retail Life Insurance Advice, known as the Trowbridge Report. The Trowbridge Report makes recommendations on advisor remuneration, licensee remuneration, quality of advice, and insurer practices, including a new life insurance code of practice. The report recommends that advisor remuneration should be limited to a 20% level commission for upfront and ongoing payments, plus an initial advice payment capped at $1,200 per client paid when a client first takes out a life insurance policy, and then no more than once every five years. The RBA decided to leave the cash rate unchanged at 2.25% at its April board meeting. While the Australian dollar has declined noticeably against a rising US dollar over the past year, RBA's Governor Glenn Stevens said further depreciation seems likely, particularly given the significant declines in key commodity prices. Macroeconomic risks arising from the housing market have increased, according to the RBA's March 2015 Financial Stability Review. The review found that reports from banks and other mortgage market participants suggest that key non-price loan criteria such as serviceability and deposit criteria have remained broadly steady overall. However, the exception is that some banks recently applied stricter criteria for some inner city apartment markets and certain mining exposed to regional towns. In this environment, the review stated it is especially important for macroeconomic and financial stability that lending practices take into account system-wide risks in the housing and residential mortgage markets. Looking to international news, soft commodity prices and recovery in major industrial economies will bolster Asia's developing nations, according to an Asian Development Bank report. The report forecasts developing Asia will achieve GDP growth of 6.3% in both 2015 and 2016. The region also grew 6.3% in 2014. From the trough of the GFC in 2009, developing Asia has contributed 2.3 percentage points to global GDP growth, nearly 60% of the world's annual 4% pace. Data from the Labor Department has revealed that the US economy added 126,000 jobs in March, but the unemployment rate was unchanged at 5.5%. However, the findings come as a disappointment after 12 straight months of the US economy adding over 200,000 jobs a month. The slowdown in hiring was attributed in part to the harsh winter weather with the manufacturing, construction and government sectors all experiencing a slight drop in workers. UK GDP could be 2.2% lower in 2030 if Britain leaves the EU and fails to strike a deal with the EU or reverts to protectionism, according to a new report by Open Europe. The report states that the economic impact of a British exit from the European Union is not as clear-cut in either direction as most previous analysis has suggested. Instead, it will depend on a number of tough decisions in the UK and Europe. This includes whether the EU itself will embrace reform and whether UK politicians and voters are willing Britain into becoming a deregulated, free trading economy outside the EU. After two major inquiries, the PJC on Corporations and Financial Services inquiry into proposals to lift the professional, ethical and education standards in the financial services industry and the financial system inquiry, the Federal Government has issued a consultation paper upon which it is inviting submissions from interested parties. The Government is seeking to build on the momentum of the FOFA legislation and the Financial Advisors Register to develop a framework for financial advisors. This framework should include how standards will be lifted and maintained at a specified minimum level, how minimum standards will be monitored and enforced, 
and mechanisms for the ongoing professionalization of the industry. After the launch of the Financial Advisors Register in March, ASIC will now focus on capturing financial advisor qualifications, training and professional membership details by the end of May 2015. The new register, which contains more than 19,000 appointments, met the Australian Government's commitment to provide an industry-wide public register of financial advisors by the end of March 2015. The register presently contains details of persons employed or authorised, directly or indirectly, by AFS licensees to provide personal financial advice to retail clients on investments, superannuation and life insurance. Authorised Deposit Taking Institutions, or ADIs, recorded net profit after tax of $34.4 billion over the year ending 31 December 2014, according to APRA. This is an increase of $3.4 billion, or 11.1%. Total assets of ADIs, as at 31 December 2014, were $4.3 trillion, an increase of $374.7 billion, or 9.4% over the year.